Everybody ready? Great. Well, I'm going to say a few things and then I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. But I think it's really important. We talked about a lot of really important topics tonight. And I think what is important is we didn't hear anything from my opponent about restoring the right to abortion nationwide. We didn't hear anything about protecting our democracy and every America's, American's right to vote or getting illegal guns or dangerous weapons off the streets or even one solution to lower costs for our families. <clears throat> These are challenges I really care about, and I get up every day trying to figure out how to make life better for people here in Washington State with real solutions, not sound bites. <clears throat> you know, we're not auditioning for some Fox News personality show. We are telling our constituents we want to represent them in the United States Senate and find solutions to the challenges that we face. Tonight, I really did my best to speak to people of Washington State and answer their questions. My opponent, I felt like she was speaking for Mitch McConnell, uh, who actually recruited her to run for this seat and is spending millions himself to try and get her elected. <clears throat> my opponent is someone who supported a national ban and defunding Planned Parenthood before she launched her campaign. She campaigned on serious concerns with the 2020 election. That is a campaign, uh, that is an election denier. And that's not all. My opponent refused to admit humans contribute to climate change. Look, we, we cannot send a climate denier to the United States Senate from the Evergreen State. We do not need a voice in the other Washington who's there to work for Mitch McConnell or Donald Trump. We need someone who is looking out for our state first, foremost, and always. In just the last year and a half, I have passed bills to lower the cost of prescription drugs, to repair our roads, our bridges, our highways, and make universal high-speed internet a reality. We passed legislation to bring manufacturing jobs right back here to Washington State and set our country on a path towards a stronger, clean energy economy with lower energy costs, more jobs, and real energy independence. So I am fighting every day to lower costs for the basics. And I have to say my opponent didn't have one single idea about how she would do that. I will protect Social Security and Medicare for everyone. And, and uh, with the pro-choice majority, as I said, I will pass my bill to codify Roe on day one. I know the race is close, and I want everyone to know we need everybody to vote. Everybody who cares about women's reproductive rights, who cares about our democracy, who cares about working people in our state, it's time to vote. To the people of Washington State, if you give me your votes, I will be accountable to you, not Mitch McConnell. And with that, I'm happy to answer some questions. Thank you. The, the same way I always have. As a United States Senator, I come home almost every weekend. I talk to people in every community of the state. I listen to them about what their issues are, what their concerns are, and work with them to find solutions. That is what I've always done. I don't ask them their party. I don't ask them their affiliation or who they voted for. I work to make sure our country is working for them. Speaking of polls, um, do you do you think that it reflects, you know, your opponent has tried to deprive you of the establishment of, you know, the Democrats who have been in the Senate for now 30 years. Do you, do you think that voters are getting frustrated with the Democrat Party? Look, I think people are frustrated with what's happened in their lives in the last several years. We had a pandemic. Everybody struggled through it, trying to figure out how to make ends meet, how to keep their kids in school, how to keep their jobs. It has been a frustrating time, and now they are seeing challenges to every family in inflation. So the question that they're asking is, what will you do to help my family? And that's why I am so focused on lowering costs to help them get through this, to make sure that we are doing everything we can to survive the challenges we faced. And I will continue to do that. Because on her website, 
she stated that she has, quote, serious concerns with the 2020 election results. This was months and months after it had been decided and after we'd gone through all the process and actually President Biden was inaugurated into office. When you continue to put that on your website and send that to people, it sows mistrust. It sows mistrust that leads to people who don't trust our democracy. And I think that is extremely dangerous. We saw the outcome of that on election day, I'm sorry, on January 6th. Even to today where we see some of the violence with Nancy Pelosi's husband being targeted. People need to stop denying an election. Let me make this very clear. I have been happy with some elections and not happy with some elections. But at the end of the day, if the opposite party wins, even Donald Trump, I accept the results of that election to the point of, as a member of leadership, sitting 10 feet away from him when he was inaugurated into office and using my position to show that the election was legitimate. She has never done that. She has never called on President Trump to stop. And to me, that is an election denier, and it is really dangerous for this democracy. She didn't say end the talks. <laughs> she said to end the G JCPOA, which President Trump already did. But, you know, what, what President Biden is doing is trying to see if there is a path forward to have an agreement. I think it is extremely difficult now. Russia is in a different place. China's in a different place. Iran's in a different place. But diplomacy first is always the first step that you take, and they're trying. Because the alternative to allow Iran to become a nuclear state is extremely frightening. So they're taking those steps now. I do think we're in a much different position than before, and it's going to be very difficult to do. So, so local protesters call to not treat the Iranians and make legitimate uh, U.S. embassy groups as hostile. What I say to protesters is I am proud of those women who have the courage to stand up in Iran and show the rest of us what they are fighting for. And it's incumbent upon us as leaders to support them, and I do. The Times News team says they're looking at uh, Democratic voters across the state and the congressional votes on average. What do you need to ensure that people are going to vote for this election and that the Democrats will stay in? Look, I, I've been all over the state. I, I've been talking to my supporters. I will tell you, the enthusiasm is incredible. People realize the consequences of this election. Women's rights are on the line. Our democracy is on the line. Our economy is on the line and the steps we take to help get our country moving again. Again, I gave and have given specific areas where I am working to lower costs for families and will continue to. I didn't hear one idea from Tiffany Smiley about how she would do it. She's really good at describing a problem. Anybody can describe a problem. A legislator is someone who can take those issues, go to work in D.C., and pass legislation that I have passed. When you talk about describing a problem, uh, in Washington State, as a Republican, I define a real problem. As a senator, what is something you can do on a national level that's going to directly impact Well, what we have done and will continue to do is to help our communities because, as many of them have told me, they lack enough police now. They're trying to recruit. They're trying to keep people on the force. They're trying to train new people. So what we did in the American Rescue Plan was put in a considerable amount of money, which I don't have in front of me right now, happy to get that for you, for com uh, uh, individual communities to get to help provide police on the street so they can enforce their laws. I absolutely supported that, voted for it, <clears throat> and will continue to do that. We have other programs that support, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> um, support local police like burn, <clears throat> burn grants that we appropriate every year. So yes, we do try and help as much as we can with local communities who are facing a real challenge in specifically hiring police officers. But I think it is wrong to just say that is the only problem. Yes, people want someone to respond, and I do, and I know that, and we need to help provide police for our communities when we can. 
But we also, as I said, need to deal with the issue of gun violence, and we need to deal with the issue of mental health. And those are things I am focused on in Washington, D.C. Why in the past, at some point in the past 30 years, haven't you put to codify Roe before? <laughs> because we had protections under a Supreme Court, and those protections assured women in every state in this country that your right to make your own health care decision is your right, not a politician's. That was thrown out the window when Mitch McConnell jammed the court with people who said, I'm pro-life, don't worry about it, and look where we are. So now it is imperative that we take action at the national level to restore the protections of Roe. Thanks. That'll do it. Thank you all.